do you ever just get those rounds of Battlefield where everything sort of seems to go right regardless of, of what you do? This is one of those rounds. This is Rush, Battlefield 5 on Twisted Steel, and of course we are attacking the best way to play Rush, but this is one of those rounds that I think I'm going to remember for a long, long time. I can still remember rounds of Bad Company 2 that I played on Arica Harbor. I think I've told the story before, a guy named Des UK, and we just had one of the best rounds over a Bluetooth microphone that I've ever, ever played. This was back when I was playing uh, on the PlayStation. I can remember rounds of, of Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4, and of course Battlefield 1 too. I mean, you can't forget that. But this is one of the Battlefield 5 rounds that I don't think I'm ever going to forget because although it wasn't an absolutely perfect round, there was just some stuff that was happening and the way that the action flowed that makes me think I'm going to remember it forever. And it actually started off on a really bad foot because I spawned in with a class that I didn't want to use. I spawned in as a recon and I thought, well, that's no good for Rush because you want to be aggressive and push up on the objectives. But then I remembered and you just saw me fire it the flare gun and how important that can actually be. On on a mode like Rush, with a mini-map that could be full of little enemy dots, if you're the one popping the flare and lighting up the mini-map, it can be so, so helpful to your team. And I think here, even though I, I'm down at this point, and I don't, <laughs> I don't hold any grudges towards any of the players who didn't pick me up until this got destroyed, but we pushed up so quickly and were able to take this really early on in the round and it gave us a good start and it meant we could move up our front line really, really quickly. Now these first set of objectives here on Twisted Steel, they can either be really difficult or really easy to take and if you can capture Alpha first of all and get that one out of the way, you can then use the Alpha point as that front line as I was just saying, but it then sort of forces all the defenders to sit back on that far objective and although that might then seem very difficult to sort of get in there and get rid of those players, we didn't find it as difficult as I thought we were going to, and it may well have been because I was just spotting everybody with the flare gun and just lighting up the minimap, but they were sort of camping on the bridge to the far right hand side as you can see here, and I'm not really sure why they were deciding to do that, especially after we'd already taken Alpha, because at that point we'd all pushed up further than the viewpoint they could really get from the bridge. And so it just enabled us to push up like we are now, up to the standback, up to the sandbags, and then onto the road here. And once we got to this point, like here's one of the guys that was just camping out there. I think that's the second time I've killed that same player. But once we got to this point, we could then really attack from here. We're pretty much now in their spawning position, because that's one of the few, few parts of Twisted Steel I don't really like. The, the defender's spawn is very, very close to the B objective. I'm not quite a fan of that, but... Once we get up here, it's much easier to maintain a position, especially as a recon player, because you can put down a, uh, a spawn beacon, and I think I do that in about 10 seconds or so, but this is why I kind of felt like I wasn't using the right class to begin with, because even at this point, even though I had been spotting up the minimap, like, using a long rifle here is it's not the most effective, and you kind of have to get a little bit creative with what you're doing, so I went for some hip fire, <laughs> as you do. I got lucky with that one, and then missed this guy, but... Um, but yeah, I felt like I was using the wrong weapon, but for some reason I stuck with it because I wanted to use that spawn beacon and I wanted to use this flare gun. Now we managed to capture the B objective and just unfortunately my capture software stopped recording at some point. So I've actually found the recording some of the audio is a little bit out of sync, so I've had to move things around. But it's at this point here where I started to realise that maybe I am using the right class here. And even though down on this left hand side things can be very, very open... There, there is a point where you can kind of use it as a launching pad into the rest of the objective. Because most of the time, the defending team, they're focusing on the hill over to the right-hand side, directly in front of the A objective. And not as many people bother coming over here. And as you can see, I'm kind of just picking players off left and right at the moment, which is, which is really awesome. And, and what we were actually doing here, or at least me and the two other players you can see on the mini-map there in, in my squad... We were just annoying the enemy team and distracting them from what was happening over at the rest of the base. And I thought this was going to be a really good point for us to maybe flank around the back and take the B objective and maybe get rid of that one first before we go for A. But unfortunately, we couldn't quite pick up enough steam here and, and really push onwards. We still had a good go, though. And like I said, we were just annoying the enemy team. And sometimes when you're playing Rush, that's just as important as another squad really being really aggressive and pushing 
onto an objective. Because if you can distract four, five, six members of their team, that's nearly 50% of the infantry, or what, a third, maybe, maybe two-fifths of the infantry on their team, just taken out of the equation, not focusing on the two objectives properly. As you can see here, I did get taken down. But I spent a good minute there just harassing the enemy team from a different angle so that they were distracted from something else that we were doing. I then decided to just go for the normal approach and just run straight in. And this is one of the parts of the round that that I thought was was really, really good because not only did, did our team manage to consistently push up, but I managed to keep myself alive, which is really difficult at this point of the map because you're in full view of so much cover and there's already a lot of destroyed cover here too. And I thought I was going to die relatively quickly, but... I just thought, you know what, I'll use my secret weapon, the spotting flare, and I'll make sure that the uh, spawn beacon's down. And that way, I can just assist as much as possible, because again, at this point here, I've got a long rifle in my hands. It's really not the weapon that I should be using. And it did cross my mind that I could switch to the P08 carbine, and I could have something that would be more aggressive in this situation, but there are a couple of times where I'm like, no, nah, I'm still using the long rifle, and I still think I'm going to be able to be competent with it. But I couldn't be that guy that sort of rushed the objective straight away. So I was kind of just waiting here, spotting flares and providing some, some covering fire so that someone else could run in and try and arm that objective. Don't ask me how that guy didn't kill me. I, I mean, somebody obviously picked him off from, the, uh, from another part of the map, but he definitely should have killed me there. I, I was really, really lucky, to be honest. And I enjoy picking that guy off in the house as well, the, uh, the long rifle mixed with the, uh, the pistol. And here, look, you can see I'm just sort of strafing this line at the front here, trying not to get myself killed, just waiting for players on my team to run in and arm that objective because they'll just have a better chance of defending themselves instead of me running in with a rifle that's not really going to do anything. And I can just pick players off here and there, even get a couple of revives in, and all I'm doing is just helping my team as much as I possibly can in this situation. And so I regard this as a good bit of teamwork, I think. But you can see that the MCOM just keeps getting armed and disarmed, armed and disarmed, armed and disarmed. And it was starting to frustrate me a little bit because we were starting to really run down on tickets and we hadn't taken either of the objectives at that point. And unfortunately, I got killed here. But I did get a revive from this guy, which was really nice. Once some smoke had come in and I just sort of threw caution to the wind here and just went for the arm, I, I definitely thought I was going to get shot. But for some reason, I didn't get shot. And then I sort of ran back to my position again. And I'm not sure if this is where we actually capture the objective or not, or whether it gets disarmed and somebody else gets it. I can't quite remember. But even at this point, we've got 28 tickets left, and neither of the MCOMs are down yet. Yeah, I think we did actually take this objective. I think we did. Like, we're now only on 26 tickets, 25. Yes, I did take the objective. Now I remember. Okay, so at this point, we've now got only 26 tickets to take the B objective. So that's literally one-third of the tickets that you're given for the entire sector, so things aren't going particularly well. And here, about to get absolutely obliter obliterated by enemy artillery, but now down to 23 tickets, and I was like, well, what can I really do here? Again, I'm not I'm not spawned in with, with the class that's going to make me super effective if I run in at close quarters, so I just thought, let me get the ammo that I can get, and I'll, I'll find a position that I can I can get myself into. And here's me checking to see whether I can call in an artillery, because I'm the squad leader. I'm thinking, what can I do to help my team here? I've already called in one artillery earlier on, but I've now got enough points again that, that I can do it again. But obviously, we've already got a friendly artillery coming in here. Is this friendly? Yeah, it is a friendly one. We've already got a friendly artillery coming in, but the B objective, we're only seven, 17 tickets left, was still, still waiting to be blown up. And I was like, we have to do something here, but I can't, again, I can't be the player to go in and do it. So I thought, you know what, I'll call in an artillery strike on the position that they're going to be running into the objective. I got lucky there with that kill. The other guy would probably have killed him anyway. But I'll call in an artillery strike on the position that they're going to run into the objective. And that way, even if I don't get many kills, I don't know if I do get too many kills. I think I get maybe one or two. Um... But then it just stops them going onto the objective through that really open route. And it means that we can get on and arm the objective. Again, unfortunately, I got killed here trying to flank round on the left. But once I respawned, I just took back the same position. And I just keep going for, for ammo all the time. So I can keep spamming flares onto the objective. And then that way, we know what's happening. Eight tickets left. And we just get the arm in for the MCOM. And I was like, 
I was sure that we weren't going to get it at this point. Down to six tickets. I was like, this is not going to happen because they're going to run in now. The artillery stopped. They're definitely going to be able to take this back. But I believe we managed to get it with this, which is uh, which was a really cool moment because even though I wasn't talking in chat, there was just this feeling when I was playing with everybody that we were all pushing as a really big group to try and get these objectives. And it just felt like a real team effort because this is two sectors in a row now where we've kind of left it quite late within the amount of tickets that we've got to really get the objective. So to have that feeling and just sort of say, right, we pushed as hard as we could and finally right at the last minute, we managed to get that objective. It's a really good feeling. It's, it's why I like Rush so much because it just gets more and more and more tense as you go along. Look, we're down to zero tickets and the objective is only has only just been armed and then set off again. There we go. We get the objective. And this is what I mean about Rush. It's like it can get down to the very last minute and the result of the match can completely change. Like there, the defenders must thought must have thought, oh, we're going to win this. We're going to get the objective back. But they didn't. And even though we didn't have any respawn tickets left at all, which meant if they disarmed the objective, they would have won. We managed to hold off for just a few seconds and we move into the next sector. So I count that as, as a really good part of Rush. And it's why I love this game mode so much. Now this next part, again here, we're kind of on a little bit of a slow burner because we've got to make our way towards these next objectives and they are a fair distance away. And this is the point where probably with my long rifle I can do the most damage and there we go, taking out another guy who's uh, sitting up on the roof there. That's a really good position to actually to put yourself as a defender if you can get up on that roof there. Unless a, a tank decides to fire a shell at you, then you're going to get destroyed. But um, no, it's a little bit of a slow burner moving up here because... Although there is a lot of cover, there's some really long lines of sight within it. Look, you can see this sniper here. He's trying to take me out. I think I managed to get the guy. I'm not 100% sure, but there's me still spamming flares onto the objective because I'm like, this has been so effective so far. I'm just going to keep doing it. I did take the guy down. I, I remember now. But um, that's one of the things once I realized that I was playing recon and I had the ability to really help out my team by just spotting the entire set of enemies around an objective. I was like, why would I stop doing this? So I just kept on spamming flares. And I think it really did make a big difference to the round. I genuinely think it did because it means that my squad can see exactly what's going on. And, and that's really helpful. That guy was getting me a little bit frustrated where he wouldn't move off and I could see him on the minimap and I was like, I can't move until that guy's gone because I'm just not going to be able to take him out. But uh, yeah, we managed to move up onto the base here. I don't know if I managed to get that guy. No, he managed to take me out. I remember there. But this gets really chaotic. This this objective here, because there's so much cover in the way and there's so many sandbags and then there's the house and there's not a huge amount of room to then move around it. I like this this zone on uh, on Twisted Steel. I, I really enjoy it. And on Rush, it's it's really good fun. Did I manage to get this guy? Well, someone else did, but I did it. I did an okay job. And here comes the uh, the enemy artillery here. Again, just spamming flares because I know it's the right thing to do. And we did manage to get that first objective, which is a good deal. But this is why. Like, Rush with the artillery is just super chaotic. I like the way that the screen shake has slightly been toned down with the artillery. It's no longer quite as ridiculous as it used to be. So it's more tolerable on Rush. And I think it's really good for area denial. And it's just good for moving up if you want some cover. The smoke's really good as well. Those two reinforcements work really well on this Rush game mode. Again, it's another reason why that I like this game mode so much. Like... The reason that I like Rush so much is because it brought me into the franchise. I started playing Battlefield around the Bad Company days, a sort of late Bad Company 1, and then into the beta of Bad Company 2. That's where I, I really started playing Battlefield games. And obviously the beta of Bad Company 2 was, was Port Valdez Rush. Uh, the snow map going down the hill into the first base and then along the coastline and then up into that final base up the hill. And that is what got me into Battlefield, which is why when, when I play Battlefield games... I feel like Rush is a classic mode because it's what I, I started with and I believe it should be in, in every Battlefield game. It makes me really sad that, Battle, uh, that Rush is a limited time game mode in Battlefield 5. And based on the gameplay that's happening right now that's really tactical, it's really... <sighs> It's really exhilarating. Like here, like I'm just literally like, we've only got eight tickets left. I have to go and arm this objective now. I'm just going to throw caution to the wind. Even though I've been really patient in my build-up, it's like, we haven't got enough tickets now. We're just going to have to completely change what we're doing here and try something different. 
like, the chaos around these MCOMs and the way that you build up to them and the way the map flows and the match flows, like, you don't really get that from any other game mode. And no disrespect to Conquest, but Conquest, you just run from flag to flag and you're covering the same part of the map over and over again. Rush is really procedural. It's linear. You move through different parts of the map and that changes the gameplay as you go. And it's not a ring around the rosy, so to speak, like Conquest. And especially Conquest in the last two Battlefield games, people just run round in herds. Whereas on Rush, you don't really get that. You just sort of have waves of people that move forward towards objectives. You get groups that split off towards one objective and split off towards the other, but there's less players overall, so it, it just doesn't feel like a herd mentality. There's actual tactics available in Rush here. I, I really liked that headshot kill. That was really nice. I There's just a part of Rush that, that I I don't ever want it to go away. I, I really, really enjoy the game mode, and I was so happy that I was having such a good game here on Twisted Steel. I think this match lasted about 25 minutes in total, and I think you're going to see about... 18 minutes or so of it, but this is us getting to the last base, and unfortunately the defenders didn't put up as good as a fight as they did for the previous three sectors, where I have to hand it to the defending team. They did a really, really good job at trying to stop us getting through. But this is why I'm going to remember this match for so, so long, because it wasn't one of those easy wins where, I don't know, you go on like a 10 kill streak and you get like three MCOM arms or whatever. I think I got two MCOM arms here on, on this one and I managed to get two confirmed explosion, explosions as well, which is great. That's that's really cool. But like I, f I found that the reason I like this more is because like it was hard for us to win up until this final sector the defenders kind of fell away in this final sector i'm not really sure what happened but like it just was a little bit easier for us to, to get the win here but like the first three sectors were a real hard graph to get that far and for at least two of the sectors we had no tickets left and we still managed to arm the mcom which is really really cool that's why i'm going to remember it because it was it was a tense moment and it, it was good to have a difficult experience in Battlefield 5. It felt like I was being challenged, and it's those moments where you come out on top when you're challenged that you're going to remember. That's why I remember some of the matches from Bad Company 2 and Battlefield 3. So there you go. That's why I think Rush should stay as a permanent game mode in Battlefield 5. I think they should disable Grand Operations, rework that, and leave Rush in for the time being. So, yeah. I think it should be permanent. This round was awesome. I had a really good time playing it. GG to everybody. But yeah, thanks very much for watching, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you're going to cry with me when Rush disappears once Marita launches. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.